Hello, in this video I will be reviewing um, a new book for me, uh, Mark of Kings, um, which is part of a series which I can't remember the name of now. But uh, yeah, so let's just jump in. This book is... So I guess what I'll do is I'll quickly give you a sort of 30 second spoiler free version because I'm actually going to recommend that you go read this book. Um, so 30 second spoiler free version is it's pretty generic fantasy, but it's done quite well um, and it's just kind of an enjoyable sort of generic quest fantasy sort of think Lord of the Rings um, kind of uh, vibe um, maybe sort of Lord of the Rings meets First Law I think that's how I would describe it um, and so it functions quite well it has sort of its significant flaws for sure but it's kind of fun generic quest fantasy which you will probably enjoy if you're a fantasy fan um, so yeah that's the spoiler free section let's get into some spoilers here um, so this book is kind of follow. It's first of all, this book really starts with a bang. Let's just go through it a little bit chronologically. Um, so we start with um, our main character, whose name I've already forgotten, and, which might tell you some of the issues that I'll talk about later in the story. But uh, so we start with our, our main character. Uh, he's a, he's a baby, right? And his parents are in a town that's getting attacked, um, and so you know they're they're under attack. There's like a burning building. You know, she has to. His mum has to run away from his fire, um, but, like bring him through the fire, so she's you know gets all burnt and stuff. Um, and they eventually go get help from Rin, who is this, like, sort of shape-shifting wolf kind of guy, at least uh, that's what we think of him at the start, um, and he saves them from this, you know, thing, and then they run away together, but then his father decides to go back to help defend, uh, the sort of past to stop the sort of monster evil bad guy thing, sort of think orcs mixed with, kind of just, you know, orcs, trollocs, you know, it's all the same thing, um, but yeah, so, um, you know, he has to go defend, and so he dies, and... Um, our main character, his mum, and the shapeshifter dude escape. Um, and then we, you know, and then we flash forward, like, obviously quite far in time until our main character, I think he's, I think he's probably mid-twenties, um, and he's kind of acting as sort of as a bounty hunter, but not like the evil sort of Boba Fett type of bounty hunter, but rather the, um, actually good bringing pe bad people in type of bounty hunter, so that, that's cool, and he's with his shapeshifting friend who is now a horse, who, because he's shapeshifting, obviously. Um, so... Let's just analyze this a little bit. I think that this functions very well for whatever reason. I will call it analysis. You're gonna hear my epic analysis here. Um, I think for whatever reason, it actually functions really well. I was really drawn in at the start of this book, and I, um, you know, there's a lot of sort of violence, but well done. Um, and I really felt like as soon as I got into it, like literally as soon as I turned this book on because I was listening to it, I was immediately like, oh my gosh, like this is good. I want to like see where this goes. And then that was continued um, even after the time jump where, you know, there's a bit less action, you know, he's just walking around the wilderness, so to speak. But even then I was, you know, really into it. Um, but so he, you know, we, so at the start, we already have one mystery built up where it's like, what the hell is up with this random shifting wolf guy um, who's friendly? Um, so that's one mystery. Then we kind of find this... Um, he, you know, he tracks these bad guys down, um, and we have, and they've, like, taken a female prisoner, who turns out to be a half-elf, so we're like, oh, who's this half-elf person? And then finally they go to this kind of glade where there's, like, a whole bunch of weird, evil, murdery stuff going on, like, a bunch of people are dead, and there's, like, a dark cave and stuff, and it's real, it's real dark and really well done and really, um, emotive, and it just makes you ask these questions, like, what the hell's going on here? Who are these people? Um, and all these questions are, are you know, are inevitably asked, and, of course, the, his shape-shifting friend, Ren, is acting super suspicious the entire time, um, you know, and just being a bit weird, so you're, like, definitely, like, oh, I wonder what's going on here. Um, perhaps he's a bad guy, perhaps he's a good guy, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? Um, so the reason I'm kind of harping on all these questions is, I believe this leads to, uh, one of the biggest flaws of the book, which is that, you know, pretty soon after, we get you know, he, they go to this, uh, the half-elf's, you know, dad's sort of place, um, and we just basically get all our questions answered. Uh, turns out that the shapeshifter is a dragon, turns out that the evil, you know, all the people were getting killed to feed some random other sort of semi-dragon wyvern type thing, and, um, it's all because of some big bad witch sort of thing. Um, and I just can't help but feel that the mystery was so much more compelling than the answers, in the sense that the answers are pretty generic basic fantasy stuff, it's like, oh, it turns out it was a dragon, and turns out it was a big evil person. Um, and to be fair, it's not like, like, I don't, I'm not necessarily complaining too hard, because this is fantasy, you know, this is, you know, generic quest fantasy sort of thing, and this is exactly what you would expect. But I just, I couldn't help but feel a little bit sort of deflated after that, because I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh, okay. Um, with that said, though, I don't want to be too negative, because we then kind of start, we kind of hang out here at the, you know, the half-elf's dad's house for a while, we have perhaps a slightly budding romance between, um, our main character and the half-elf, um, it's all, it's all good, um, and then they get attacked by, a, like, a giant wyvern thing, um, and, you know, the story starts again, um, with, you know, they, the dragons find the wyvern, and then we, basically, the, the rest of the book is kind of them just trying to escape from this evil 
sort of witch person, well not her, but like sort of her minions, and then the book finally sort of ends with them like trying to escape through some mountains um, uh, from her. Uh, so first of all, so what do we think of this whole thing? First of all, it's obviously very derivative of Lord of the Rings. I mean, to the point where they're escaping through a mountain pass that they get forced into, and then the evil person starts summoning weather to take them out of, you know, starting with a storm to take them out of the mountain, and it's like exactly like the scene of Saruman in Lord of the Rings, um, both book and film. Um, so... Like, it is very derivative of Lord of the Rings in that way. But with that said, there's enough different here, there's enough new here, and there's enough old here, in fact, that it actually is fun and it is enjoyable, and I did actually have a good time um, whilst I was reading through this. But yeah, I just kind of well, couldn't help but feel, you know, it's a bit generic. But, you know, I had fun, it was fun action, um, it was, there was, like, the characters actually functioned quite well, for example, the sort of wizard guy... Um, who's the half elf's dad? I think it's quite cool. He's kind he, he's kind of a Gandalf vibe, but much more less ethereal and much more real. Um, which I actually you know I think is a fun contrast to Lord of the Rings. Um, and yeah, the end of a book uh, functions relatively well. And once again, it doesn't actually end necessarily like that. This book is sort of split in half, so to speak. Um, it doesn't end at a um what's the word like it doesn't conclude it just kind of ends um which is fine i guess because you know the book was getting kind of long and i you know i understand that you have to you have to chop it and it's not like this book was filled with filler or anything like that um so it's not like i felt pretty particularly mad about uh about that um so yeah i just think that yeah this book is sort of i'll call it like a 6.5 7 out of 10 in the sense that it's doing a lot of fun stuff and a lot of enjoyable stuff and action is cool but uh, it perhaps falls short of kind of a true uh epic you know, great fantasy stuff that perhaps um, you might be used to, or you might have experienced in the past. Um, but I would still recommend it, uh, because, like I said, there's enough new and enough cool and enough interesting things going on. Um, for example, like, it turns out that the evil sort of dragon thing that our main, you know, our dragon guy fights is actually, like, a corrupted version of him. Um, which, once again, is a bit derivative of a lot of rings, you know, elves turning into orcs. Um, which, of course, that's film only, I do believe. I don't think that's actually in the books. But the point is, you can kind of see where these ideas are coming from. But with that said, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a problem in that case. Um, so, yeah, I, I would check out this book. But, oh, one other thing to talk about is that the action scenes or the violent scenes are written beautifully. It's, it sort of reminds me of, you know, when you watch a movie and there's no hard cuts in a fight scene and you just get a perfect version of what's happening and you can really see it and understand it and enjoy it. I feel like that's kind of a book version of that where everything is described. Not too much. It's not, like, overly detailed. Like, he moved his sword one inch to the left or whatever. It's beautifully just everything you need, nothing you don't. Really beautiful prose when it comes to the combat in, in these books. Um, and I, that's why I really think that it added to some of the action and perhaps I'm even given this book... A little bit more of a pass than I would normally because, um, you know, it has a lot of action, but the action is so well done. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool, <laughs> give give me more. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, overall, I would give this book a six point five out of ten. Check it out if you you know enjoy that some of that more slightly old style quest fantasy sort of thing. Um, and you, uh, yeah, you kind of just want Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but not quite as good. Um, which I get is I guess is a slightly negative note to end the video on. So I just want to make sure that you know this actually is a good book and you will enjoy it. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching and uh, have a good one.